claims and his followers claim that he has the knowledge of the unseen. And they say, oh, but I went to him and I, he didn't know anything about me. And I sat there and he said, your daughter's waiting in the car and she's sick. You should go to her. <gasps> you see? He knows the unseen. It's karama, it's a miracle. And they made shirk with Allah. You know why? Because shaitan fooled them. Because they didn't have knowledge. Because they, the, these people, magicians, fortune tellers, palm readers, and some people who pretend to be pious, even they pray and they do many things of zuhud, but because of the shirk they make, shaitan cooperates with them. So the jinn is telling him, the shayateen is telling him about these things. So people will believe it, and they will go astray, and they will end up in the hellfire forever. Because they made shirk with Allah. They believe someone had knowledge of the unseen. To believe someone can read from your palm your future is shirk. Because you believe they have the knowledge of the unseen. To believe that they look in the stars and I'm a Virgo, I'm a Leo, I'm a Pisces, I'm a this and that. And they're going to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow is shirk. You go to a soothsayer, he cuts open the animal and he looks at the oh, and the intestines, says, oh this and that. And you believe he's going to cure you or help you. It's shirk. But you find these things widespread amongst the Muslims. Widespread. Subhanallah. You will follow the ways of those who came before you step by step, hand span by hand span. The Prophet wasallam one day, he was reciting the ayah. The English meaning of the ayah. The Jews and Christians have taken their priests and their rabbis as lords besides Allah. So one companion, Adi ibn Hatim Atay, Adi ibn Hatim Atay used to be a Christian. He heard this, he said, Oh Rasulullah, we didn't used to worship them. You see, he was thinking. That we didn't used to pray to them and bow down to them and supplicate to them. and, and This is what he was thinking. And then the Prophet clarified it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, didn't they make halal for you what Allah made haram and you accepted it? And didn't they make haram for you what Allah made halal and you accepted it? He said, yes. We used to do that. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that was your worship of them. Why? Because Allah is a sharri. Allah is a sharri. Allah is al hakim and Allah is al hakim. Allah is the lawmaker. It is Allah who decides what is halal and what is haram. This is the right only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anyone comes along and says, this thing that Allah made haram is halal, and this thing that Allah made halal is haram, they have claimed to be Allah. They claim to have Allah's knowledge. They have made themselves equal with Rabbul Alameen. Subhanallah. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. The priests and rabbis, they made lawful for you what Allah made unlawful, and they made unlawful for you what Allah made lawful, and you accepted it. That was your worship of them. Is that not what we find taking place today, my brothers and sisters? Can anyone with eyes and ears and a heart, have you failed to notice this taking place amongst the Muslims? How many of us are fatwa shoppers? We go to the supermarket, we have five different types of Coca-Cola, ten different types of fizzy drinks, lots of different types of bread, we're shopping. And now we want to shop for fatwas. Which is the one I like? Which is the tasty fatwa? It's not concerned to you really whether Allah he made it halal or haram. In fact, maybe the mufti out of his mistake, because... The scholar who makes a mistake, alhamdulillah, gets a reward. If he gets it right, he gets two rewards. Any human being can make a mistake. Even the greatest mufti, the greatest imams, even the four imams, 
Even Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, they can make mistakes. They're human beings. Only Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his statement, that is fact. It is from Allah. He is the only one who is truly ma'asum. Is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever claims that someone else is ma'asum, infallible, whether it's an imam or a sheikh or anyone, then they have in fact ascribed to that person one of the qualities that can, we can only attribute to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is in fact a type of shirk. It's claiming that they have prophethood even. They don't call them prophets. It's a claiming they have prophethood. How often do we find that brothers? Something we find, we know Allah has made it haram. But we go and look for a scholar and we excuse ourselves saying, the mufti said, the scholar said, the sheikh said, Abdul Rahim said. That's our excuse. Even though it is in black and white in the Quran. We know from the Prophet ﷺ, from his sunnah, what he said. That this thing is haram or this thing is halal. How many people you find today saying, oh the classic one is polygamy. Oh polygamy, you know that was for them. That was 1,400 years ago, a man having more than one wife. Now they lay down lots of conditions. You don't find these conditions in the Sharia. One of them is, you have to ask your wife. MashaAllah. Did we find anywhere the Prophet going, Aisha, do you mind if I get married again, please? Where is this condition? Where is this condition? From the Prophet, from Abu Bakr, from Umar, from Uthman, from Ali, from Abdullah ibn Masood, from Ibn Abbas, from Abu, from any companion. Or any of the early scholars, they laid down this condition. You have to get permission. Alhamdulillah, it may be good to discuss it with your wife. It may be good to get her to agree. But to say this is a condition and make it something that you make, it is part of the Sharia. This is making something haram that Allah has made halal. Or at least you are limiting something that Allah did not limit it. How many people you say today, oh no, it's only four exceptions. How many people you say to even the Sharia? Oh, the Sharia, that's for them. The lure of the jungle. That's old, harsh punishments. Chopping off hands, stoning people to death. You know, we don't need that anymore. We have now Western liberal law. Subhanallah. And how many Muslims today you find calling for democracy? Does, do people know what is democracy? I like to have good opinion about my Muslim brothers. I think they only say that because they don't know what democracy is. They're ignorant. You know, they get amazed with the West and their helicopters and uh, aircraft and cars and, you know, and they think, oh, democracy, maybe that's the answer for us. They get, I don't know, that's it. What is democracy? You know what democracy is? It means the rule of the people. It means the people, the sovereignty is with, not Allah, with the people. It means the people decide what is halal and what is haram. It means the people decide what is the laws we should follow and what the laws we should not follow. That is democracy, the rule of the people. So if they want to make homosexuality halal, they make it halal. If they want to make beer halal, they make it halal. Wallahi, if they want to make it compulsory for you to experience some, you know, homosexuality, because after all it's natural, they tell us now, yes, they can make it law. They'll make it law. Who knows, maybe they'll make it law to kill Muslims. Why not? If enough of them say yes, votes, yes, 50%, 60%, that's it. It's the law now. Democracy. Is this, can, is this compatible with Islam? Is it 50%, 20%, 1% compatible with Islam? We cannot believe as Muslims in democracy. We can live in this country, alhamdulillah, we respect its laws. As long as it does not teach us to disobey Allah. But... We can't accept it as a belief because it is contradicting what we believe that Allah is a sharri, Allah is the lawmaker, Allah is the one who decides what is halal and haram, not the people. Yes? So it is not possible that Muslims, we could believe in democracy and accept democracy as they are now calling us over there in the US of A, George Bush and all of them telling us, you Muslims, you know now, maybe you accept democracy. You see, they make it nice, you see. Oh, you see all these fanatics and fundamentalists and people blowing everything up. It's because they don't have democracy. Subhanallah. So, you know, we need to liberate Muslim countries and give them democracy. Democracy means what? That the sovereignty is with the people. This is, wallahi, do not 
for a minute fail to understand that they are calling us to disbelieve in Allah. They're calling us to make shirk. Wallahi, if Allah said about the Jews and the Christians, if they took their priests and rabbis as gods besides Allah, and the priest and rabbi are the knowledgeable ones, they are the ulama of the Jew and the Christian. And Allah did not accept that as an excuse. Do you think Allah will accept that we took every George Bush and, and Tony Blair and whatever, and they are the ones to decide for us what's halal and haram? They have no book and no scripture and no knowledge from Allah? No. Subhanallah. So what is halal 1400 years ago is halal today. And what was haram 1400 years ago is haram today and it will be until the day of judgment. And if anyone comes along and tells you that this thing which Allah has made halal is haram, even if he's the greatest scholar on the face of the earth, we love him and we respect him, but we don't follow people in their mistakes. And if you do that, it will be shirk. It will be shirk. It is not permissible to make taqlid, to blindly follow any human being. It is not permissible to blindly follow any human being. If we know that someone brings something in contradiction to what Allah and His Messenger say, how can we follow that person in contradiction to what Allah and His Messenger say? How if you are a believer, if you are a Muslim? This is part of Tawheed. This is part of avoiding shirk. That we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sharri. He is the law maker. And there is another thing, brothers and sisters, I have to warn you about. These days with Harry Potter flying on his broom and in Lord of the Rings, you know really today they are pushing magic, magic, magic. And magic is also kufr. It is kufr. And it involves shirk. Because the magician is able to perform his tricks by worshipping shaitan or making shirk with Allah and shaitan helps him to do these things. Here we find many Muslims enjoying it. Oh yes, mashallah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have to understand once again, shirk is really amongst the most evil of the evil things. It is amongst the most evil of the evil things. It is the most evil of the evil things. This is a subject that I have only touched upon. This is the major shirk. This is the type of shirk that takes you out of Islam. How about the lesser shirk? What is the lesser shirk? What is, does anyone know what is the lesser shirk? Riyah, showing off. That you do your deeds... Not for the pleasure of Allah, but to impress people. To get fame, to get position, to get some worldly benefit. It is like the one who prays and then when he sees the people are watching him, oh, his prayer becomes even longer and his recitation becomes so sweet and nice because he is praying to impress people. Or even the person who looks at people Oh, the people are looking at me. I will make my prayers short because I don't want them to think that I'm showing off. He's still showing off. Because he's not doing his deed for Allah. He's doing it for the people. Because his deed is influenced not by what is pleasing to Allah, but by what people think. Because you can leave something to please the people and you can do something to please the people. So whoever does a deed seeking the pleasure of Allah other than Allah, it is shirk, but it is not the shirk that puts you in hellfire forever. It is not the shirk that puts you in hellfire forever. It is called the lesser shirk. Shirk al-Azhar, riya, showing off. But how many of us are free from that? You know the Sahaba, they used to consider showing off more serious than the major sins, like fornication and drinking and stealing. They used to consider showing off worse than that. Or doing your deeds for money, for power, for fame, for worldly desires. Like making hajj, not to make hajj, but to make business. That, with that is your intention. We know you're allowed to make business on hajj, but you don't make hajj 
to make business.